Hello, it's Ben. I'm happy to be back with another reaction. This time, we are going back in with Kate Bush. Now, I thought 1985 was far back. We're now going back to 1982. And I'm pretty sure, is that this year? What is it? 80, 90, 20? Is that 30 years now? No, is it? <laughs> it's 40 years. Jesus. You think the 80s is 20 years ago because I feel that we're just stuck in this 2000 mindset. This is 40 years ago, literally this year. When did this come out? This came out in September 1982. So this is literally... 40 years ago. Nearly. <laughs> Not literally then. <laughs> it's 40 years ago to the year. The Dreaming. A lot of you guys have referenced this. You've said it's her most experimental, I think, from memory. And a lot of you have said that this is one of your favorite albums by her. I'm keen to jump back into the Kate bush rooney pool. Dip my toes in. Have a little paddle. See what she's coming up with with this one. Can't believe this came out before Hounds of Love, yet Hounds of Love is more spoken about. So I'm keen to see what this sounds like. The Dreaming. Are we going to jump into a dream? Who knows? I have no idea with this chick, honestly. I have no idea ever. <laughs> Oh, it's time. Let's go. The first song is called Sat in Your Lap. Let's go. so bizarre insane very cool don't get me wrong it's so weird intriguing again i'm gonna say it a million times probably this was 40 years ago and this is just so bizarre kind of thought i knew what was going on like she was just talking about society and things we do and now i don't she's talking about being a king that karma mama <laughs> That's hilarious. Very weird. Doom, doom. It's like stuck in my head. Super, like, I guess it's called The Dreaming, right? So it feels like these are weird little dreams already. I feel like that song had so many different elements, different layers, so many things just jammed in. I just, I can't get over the fact that songs like these are soul written. Like, what the hell, Kate Bush, you psycho. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be going all over the place with this one. You guys are right. This is weird. This is experimental, and I'm loving it, even though it's so weird. <laughs> the next song is called There Goes the Tenor. Let's go. Okay, remember. Okay, remember. What? <laughs> Half the night is all adventure. Her vocals. My excitement turns into What the 
actual hell are we listening to? Bizarre. And it's like, it's obviously so good because it's so intriguing and so many different things are being used, you know, vocally, production wise, instrument wise. The lyrics, I uh, feel that there's some really deep meanings to them, but because they're sung weirdly and a bit disjointed in terms of like the flow, I don't know if I'm picking up on them as deeply as I should be, but just weird, weird, weird. How is this the same chick that did Hounds of Love? What? Uh, eclectic person. I love it. I mean, I love it because it is so weird. Um, I, I don't know if that's coming across like I do. I am enjoying it. It's just so freaking weird. The next song is called Pull Out The Pin. <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> When you think back to the songs you just listened to, I'm like, it feels like it's Toadstools, Wizard of Oz, Munchkins, all weird kind of vibes. Just, yeah. Take a shot every time I say weird in this video, because it's weird, weird, weird. Pull out the pin. Let's go. I'm going to try not to laugh anymore, because it's too funny. Let's go. She does everything right. Five and a half minutes. It didn't feel like that. I definitely got more into it than I think probably the last couple of minutes. Just that really heavy kind of feel of it. That guitar, her screaming, I love life. I was just like picturing in the studio. I just would love to see video recordings of them creating this type of music because it's just so intriguing and interesting. Definitely not as eclectic as the other songs. So maybe that's why I resonated with it a bit more once it really got into the deepness of it all. Very interesting song. Yeah, I'm gonna say that every song has deep meanings. You guys need to let me know every song and what it's about because I don't know if I'm gonna get it. That one just felt like a war song and things that are happening in war. I don't know. I love the helicopter coming in. Very interesting song. Definitely kind of shifted the mood of the album. So I wonder if we'll follow this or if it's just very eclectic that every song is so different. The next song is called Suspended in Gaffer. Let's go. Okay. We're back here. just it's so hard because your first reaction is just to be like what is going on but then when you kind of think about it they are cool they're very it's an awesome album it's just so weird and yeah i liked 
how she was singing that bit, that parrot that was kind of squ- I know it was her, but it just reminded me of this parrot singing back to her. Very interesting, I don't know what it's about. I, that, now my feet are feet of mud or something. Very weird lyrics. Don't know if I'm meant to read into them or if she's just saying random stuff. So I think that's also intriguing in that sense. The next one's called Leave It Open. Let's go. Playing it backwards. I swear that was backwards the first one. We let the weirdness in. Oh my god. I feel like I've done that myself. Okay. I don't know if I'm starting to not like it because it is just so weird. I can appreciate it for what it is in terms of this is 40 years ago. This is so bizarre and so like forward thinking, experimental, out of the box. So I can really appreciate it in that sense. Is this my type of music? No way. Would I listen to this again? I don't know. Probably not. It's not, I can't really connect to anything. And I think once I know the meanings of the songs, like I guess reading that and then going, okay, that makes sense. I guess playing them once you know the meaning will be cooler in that sense. It is very weird. I don't know if it's like, I've got the remastered version. It's just not, I guess, loud enough for me. It is a different sound and that's gonna just be because it was recorded 40 years ago. So it's not got the same sounding in terms of volume that I'd normally listen to an album at either, which I don't know if that's kind of playing into because I just want to, I don't know. I don't know, it's weird. That's its intent, right? It's meant to make you think and meant to really catch your guard and take you out of your comfort zone. There's definitely some really cool elements throughout it production wise. Her <laughs> voice is insane, the things that she's doing. So I do like it. I don't know. Number six is here. It's my favorite number. Is it going to give us the best song on the album? It's the title track, The Dreaming. I'm scared because if this is the title track, this is probably going to really just show everything that she wants to do with this song. Let's go. Did you do? God, is it called the dreamy black dream time? Oh my god, this is extreme. So is this about Australia and how it came to be? Night of Shadow were just a kind of fading out with the instruments. I I didn't think she was Australian. I swear when I looked her up, she wasn't. It's so interesting that she's singing about Australia. The more insane thing is this is written and sung and released 40 years ago and nothing's really changed in the sense of what Australia is and things like that. We still don't get taught about the history of the land. You know, it's only as you get an adult and you really want to learn more. I mean, even myself, I can absolutely say I'm so ignorant to a lot of these things. But, you know, I'm trying to be better in terms of understanding and, you know, really acknowledging that the 
way this land came to be was just so messed up. Can't believe she spoke about being mistaken for a tree. I know that, you know, there's a history with that. Very insane, just starting the song, another Kanga hitting the bonnet. I was like, what? Even with, like, with that Aussie accent, the use of the did you do? I wonder if she got permission for that because I know there is some sacred stuff around that. What a song, Dreaming, Dream Time. I wonder if that's the reference there. What the hell? Like, what the actual hell was that song? Insane, absolutely the best on the album. Again, I swear all the lyrics on this album is very heavy. That one I just understood more because I guess I know a bit about the history of the country. Well, 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 beautiful. The did you do and that little, I don't know, the Irish kind of music coming in together was so nice as well. The only song to kind of transition to the next one. Very weird. Oh my God, caught me off guard. Yeah, well, <laughs> what the hell? The next song is called Night of the Swallow. Let's go. <laughs> I love how the just is just like fading out and now this is coming in. Tonight, just like oh. I will let you do what you want to do. This is nice. definitely feel that the dreaming kind of had that shift same as hounds of love like is this back half going to be a bit more dark or a bit serious i suppose in lyrical delivery i don't know very intriguing sounds throughout yeah i have no idea what it's about i really have no idea i kind of tuned out at one point and just listened to the music yeah i just don't really know what to say to be honest <laughs> the next song is called all the love let's go I died, First time I died. Stay wide now. What? What is this? Is this a friend singing it to her? This part is so nice. Yeah, well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know what, what the hell. Guessing it's about death, although she said I died the first time with my friends, although they weren't here, but now they needed her. Am I getting this mixed up with Bjork? I swear they've got a song where it just says a lot of different hellos, which is interesting because this one says a lot of different ways of saying goodbye. I don't know, maybe I'm getting confused, but I swear it was Kate Bush that had that on one of her songs on Hounds of Love. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, yeah. It's a lot to take in at once, and I think because I'm not getting much, it's hard for me to connect. That one had some really nice moments again, but just weird, man. Like... I don't know. Yeah. It's definitely now you need more time with and like you need to listen to a few more times. It's so much to take in at once because the songs are just so 
hectic. The next song is called Houdini. Let's go. Hold hands with me, No. <laughs> oh my god. It feels like this is such an erratic, or well, it doesn't feel like it is an erratic album. See, this is so nice here. Yeah. Stunning strings, I like this so good. What song? And I just got all this for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, believe. Is Houdini, I swear, is he like a magician from memory? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they were doing some, like, this was about his tricks or something like that. Very weird song. What's new there? It's, uh, it's just so, like, my brain just can't comprehend it all. I really did like that song, that was cool. Very weird, the growls coming in. Her voice on this is just epic. I love all the vocal stuff that she's doing, so talented, and just showcasing it all. <laughs> this coming out in the 80s is just hilarious, it's just so good. We're at the last song, let's wrap this album up on this chat, or I mean, I'll try and comprehend something to put into sentences, I don't know. Get out of my house, let's go. She says I changed into a mule and then started eoring like a donk a mule is a donkey, right? What the hell? That was just insanity. I can't remember if this album, I swear this album might be Björk's favorite from memory. I don't know who came first, but this was so Björk sounding. Or like, I guess, you know, that similar vibe of just erratic, psychotic, insane stuff happening. What a journey. Now that it's over, I'm kind of like... I want more. <laughs> Halfway through, I was like, I don't like this, but I do, and I can appreciate it. Very cool, very interesting, very weird. It's hard because you almost have to try and let go of everything, but I was trying to connect with the songs, and then when I wasn't, I was getting annoyed, but I was also appreciating how random it was, and I didn't want to read the lyrics, and I had to read the lyrics. Dreaming, definitely a turning point. It didn't sound as happy and fun like the first few songs. Like, I didn't laugh as much in terms of it was making me laugh. I was laughing out of, like, just confusion and, like, what the hell. The Dreaming, absolute standard track for me. I just love it because I could connect and the meaning and things like that.
like that. Get Out of My House I really did like as well. I loved the screaming. I loved her turning into a donkey. Very, very interesting, peculiar, weird, insane. I mean, I think we can all establish the fact that it was all soul written is just beyond anything. So many things happening in this album, in the songs, everything. The writing, the production, the vocals, all amazing, stunning. So different to anything I've heard. I know I've listened to a lot of Björk, but this was just its own thing. She's her own woman. <laughs> it's just insane and so incredible that she exists and produces this stuff. A whirlwind album, tossed me like a bloody washing machine. Some cool elements within there. It's definitely one you need to just listen to again because I've just got so many things just swirling through my head. All the songs. What? Oh, right. I need to know everything, obviously. Let me know down below. Give me all the information about this album. Is this your favorite Kate Bush album? I just can't believe it's the same girl that did Hounds of Love. The versatility she has. Just the things that she can create. The things that she can make you feel. Because even if I didn't vibe or didn't like it all the time, she's making you feel that way. So it's definitely doing stuff. Incredible, incredible, incredible. What was your favorite song? Let me know down below. I think I need to go lie down in a dark room in silence. <laughs> to like purify my mind. Because that was a fever nightmare. That was it. That was the dreamy we they were all dreams, right? Well, they were one of her dreams She's just written them and put them in song format. I don't know <laughs> What other Kate Bush do we need to go into? I, don't, I think I'm gonna need a bit of a rest from her just to kind of take this album in Because her stuff is so hectic and so heavy and so full-on the full-on cut that is on patreon link is down below I'm on Instagram at Griffin. I'm like still in shock. I can't even talk hit me up on there if you want to see more Hit like and subscribe all that jazz. Hope you have a great day everyone. I'm gonna have a great day everyone. Ben is gonna go me? Oh, I can't believe she was a freaking donkey. <laughs> what the hell?